this is the next kind of trick that I want to show you. I am going to take my scraper and let me set this down. I'm going to put it right over this one right here and kind of right here. It's number 200 and you can barely read it. Anyway, okay, so I'm putting the grade over here and I'm going to just use a couple of holes, maybe even one, to scrape this into the little paint pot below. I'm not doing it on the paper because I want a little bit more color. I'm using a bigger area. So in effect, what I'm doing here is I'm creating paint. So let's see, I'm going to lift this up and see what that looks like. Oh yeah, that's great, perfect. Okay, you see, that's about the size of a small dime. And if you can, you know, you can shake your thing over. Just make sure that you don't have any color left over from your other ones. And now you can put your scraper uh, aside and of course put your coloring back in line with the other colors so that you know which one is which. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fabric medium and we're going to go ahead and put it in the paint pot with the color and I fill it up. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I've got a fair amount of yellow area that I wanna color, okay? And this is gonna take a bit, so I just wanna get started so that you can see it, but it's probably gonna have to wait about Mm, 10 to 15 minutes before it's completely mixed. So I'm coming in here with my paintbrush and I'm just stirring. Uh, it, it, it's melting basically. In fact, I think you can see a bit of the yellow color coming up already. Woohoo! So, but it takes with that much kind of fine, even though it looks fine and powdery, there's really a bunch of granules in there. And what you really want is all those granules to be completely melted before you go to paint on your work. Because if you get a bit of those grains, just like we saw in the green, um, it can actually provide you a color that you may or may not have wanted. Okay, so we're gonna stop that here and you're gonna uh, stay tuned while I come back and show you what it looks like after it's completely melted. Okay, um, it, this didn't take nearly as long. I had set a timer for 15 minutes, but it only was about maybe less than 10. And you can see that the paint is pretty much all mixed up. Now I'm gonna move this over and we're gonna start just coloring in some of the areas. Um, this is a fairly decent sized tip. Um, I'm just gonna come in here and paint these daisies first. Ah, very good color, very happy with that. Um, that's all these are supposed to be. Now this is where it gets fun because now all of a sudden you're painting the cool stuff and it looks good and it's easy. You know, I tell people all the time, you go out there and you do that big old Judy Niemeyer quilt and then you come see me for brainless and fun because this is really so easy, y'all. Um, and yet it's practical. You know, I try to make sure that everything that I use is washable um, and that it's color fast. So, you know, uh, this is this is why I'm so hot to try to, to change the quilting world into becoming a bunch of painters is because this is so fun. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to move up into this area right here and I'm gonna paint that whole background. And when I'm done, I'm going to show you another little trick to get some highlights in these corners using the Sienna Gold. But let's first get this down. Okay, great. Now we've got the yellow in that background. Now here's what I want you to do, is I want you to actually grab the the, the pencil itself. Now remember, try not to use the end with the number at it. But So let's flip this around and use the other end. Now, the, you know, wrap this around with a paper towel if you want. You will get smudged ink on your fingertips. It does wear off. Um, 
I try to be careful. So it's just, again, do as I say, not as I do. Now, we know that we just put this yellow down. So I'm going to come in here with just an edge, and I'm just going to come in here where put a little bit of this dark gold directly from the block into these corners and in between these little, whatever these doodads are, these little bit of, of kind of a, I don't know. I don't know what you call things like this. This is, this is again, where me doing a video, it's more humorous probably to listen to me make up words than it is to, to, to watch me color. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. I've got the color down. I'm gonna set my block down and then again, using the same yellow paint, no reason why not to, come in and go over where I just put that gold down. And you'll notice, see, it's giving nice blend. You're just kind of darkening and, and creating some depth into those areas. Oh, that looks really good. That makes me so happy that it works. Um, I mean, I know this works. It's just sometimes on video, you never know. You always find yourself doing stupid things on video that you would normally not never do in, in the middle of a class. Although, I don't know, I've done some pretty silly things in class, too. That's why I hope everybody just considers me a lovable doof. Um, and see, it just, this is so good. This is just so easy. And notice, though, you know, you didn't have to put a lot down. and But you do have to kind of scrub at it. You notice what I see when I'm doing with my brush. Um, you know, just, just scrub. And so, oh, doesn't that look good? A nice little bit of shadow in there. And if you want, you can kind of drag that down. Notice what I'm doing. I'm just dragging back and forth from where I've got that color. So there, that gives it kind of a shadow effect with that leaf in the back. Now, the next thing we need to do is we've got some yellow down here. I'm just going to paint it um, plain. Now, the interesting thing is I've got a bunch of this yellow paint still left over. Uh, you know, you know me. I'm, I'm, I, I, if you haven't figured it out already, I'm fairly frugal with my stuff. But this is one of those cases where unless you can get it into a bottle with a screw top where it will remain tightly sealed, it's really not worth trying to save this, y'all, because... Um, as a matter of fact, this weekend, while I was teaching some kids, we went through a bunch of my stuff and had to throw it away because so much of it had dried out. And, you know, for all of you quilters, if this is your first go around and you're watching this, this is not like keeping thread or fabric for years on end. Sadly, art tools do dry up, even, even the best of them. Now, I'm looking here too, and I see some more yellow that I want to carry forward. So I'm going to come over here, color this. So, so see, this is, this is easy. This is easy. This is all you have to do. Um, and let's see what other do I think. I'm just looking at my diagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These little, little dots are colored yellow. Uh, let's get that color. Like I said, I'm trying to use up all of this first before I, I have to let it slip down the sink. Ah, that's a question people have had for me. Is it okay to pour your kind of leavings, you know, if you're cleaning out your pipe pan or whatever, is it okay to pour it down the sink? Yes. This is all water soluble stuff, y'all. This is not, it's not chemical. It's, it's actually all just kind of organic sort of kind. I won't call it completely organic because it really isn't. But it's all water soluble. You don't have to worry about it destroying your septic. I am on a septic system and I don't have any problem with that. Start mixing a variety of colors. So I'm going to take, this is, this is Sienna Gold. It's number 240. So let me scrape a little bit of this into a pie pan. Pie pan, paint well, whatever you want to call it. I never know. I make up terms. Like I said, I think I'm amusing to most of my students for that very reason. So let's just go ahead and get that. And I'm actually going to make concentrate. We're not going to go heavy duty because some of these colors are going to be acting kind of more like a, um, like a background color like we did earlier when we went directly with 
this. So now let me grab the, this is a, a tangerine. So let me get some of this in. This is kind of a nice orange. In fact, this is one of my favorite oranges. And we're again just scraping enough. Let me see if I can do this without making too big of a mess. Okay. All right, last but not least, I'm going to grab uh, my, oh, let's do burnt orange. Burnt orange is a good one. And we'll come right in here. I'm running out of things, so it's almost time for me to come in and clean my, um, my grater because I'm running out of clean spots. But you can see so much better than using that other little thing that Derwent recommends. This, this just provides a much better way to get a lot of color without having to constantly wash a thing out. Okay. All right, so now we have those colors along with our yellow that we did earlier. And I'm going to just pour a, a small smidgen in each one of these. And as we did before, we will stop the video while this melts and creates um, fabric paint. And it, really, if I were being smart, I would have a smaller container. Um, but I'm one of these that just grabs whatever is handiest. Okay, so just like what we did before, first of all, I've got a yucky brush, so let's clean that out. Um, you know, if the water, if there's water still in the brush head, that's probably okay as you're mixing, but you really do want to clean out your brush every single time. So let me reach over here and grab it. And again, you're going to want to squeegee the brush and get as much of that water out. Okay. So just like what we did before, I'm not going to do this again for, because I think everybody pick, picked it up. Um, well, maybe just a little, just in case. Just in case, I always like to give everyone a second chance at what I'm doing. So we're just gonna stir it, and we're gonna stir it until the color completely melts. And given that there's three colors here, now it's okay to let these sit. Now, the one thing I will tell you, of course, is that you can't let it sit for hours on end. There is in this fabric medium what is called an extender. And what that does is it slows the drying time for the fabric medium for, for, for paint. M many paints have uh, this tran translucent extender in them to, to allow you to work the paint before it becomes completely hard and fast. That way it gives you time to layer colors and um, not have to worry about constantly squeezing out more paint. Okay. Okay, we're back. And it looks like all of my colors did get nice and melted. Let me just show you, and this is this is the sienna gold that I was using earlier, right here. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just just augment a little bit of what I had already done with the with the tip earlier, and yeah, see, I'm a lot happier with this. Um, sometimes when you use the fat end of a block. Um, and I'll, I'll, I confess that block had a bunch of fabric medium on at the end too, so I wasn't getting as much color as I thought. So now I'm just coming back. Now this is pretty dry. Um, I mean, it's in between times, but I, I wanted to come back in and just deepen this area up. Now you can add, my experience at least, is you can add up to about three layers of color before this cotton sateen says, no, I can't take any more. So I could continue to layer color um, for probably, oh, well, you know, maybe two more times, actually, because I'm going pretty light with this stuff. So once I've gotten kind of this base of second color in, then what I'm going to do, let me get these corners in here real quick, just uh, just to heighten the color in a bit more. Then I'm going to come in with the yellow and kind of over color. I don't care that it bleeds into the sienna gold, but this way it helps me blend and there's not such a stark contrast between the stop and start points of where this color is. So see, you can do this and it, it, it right there in particular blends it down really, really well. Um, you can drag the color around so where it gets deeper as we get towards the base. 
And that looks pretty darn good. Now, the second thing you do, can, can do here too, and I, I did bring some of the pencils over, and I'm gonna choose Burnt Orange. And just show you real quick too, that again, layering is what makes everything look so much more sophisticated. Now, this is just a slightly darker color than the sienna gold that I put down there. So, oh, see how good that looks? And just a tiny bit, you don't have to go hog wild, just at the base so that it, it really gives it some depth. So now this is why you definitely also want to hang on to your pencils. Um, the, the, the blocks are really good for large areas, but you know, you definitely always want to hang on to your pencils to, to get some more fine details in there. And then just come back in and blend accordingly. All right, now what I'm gonna do next is we're going to lay some layers in a variety of colors. And I wanna come in here in particular. This is gonna be similar to this that we did up here, but this is kind of what I call color overlay, where you actually lay one color on top of the other. And um, since this is a pretty big area, I am going to grab a bigger brush. These are some of my favorites. Let me just show you what these look like here real quick, and let me see if I can find a name. Dura Handle is what it says. I believe I get these from, oh, here we go with this. This, this, is, this is just gonna drive me crazy. And, and I apologize, it's probably driving you crazy. Um, but there you go, Creative Inspirations, Creative Mark is the brand of this uh, gold Taclon brush. And I really love the flat head here. Really makes it super easy to, to color. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down, we're coloring this area, the background behind the leaves. Now, I'll be frank, I probably should have put that this background color down first before I colored the leaves, but I was trying to use up all that green paint that I had earlier before it dried out. And I'm not being super careful because again, I'm really just going to, put this down as a bottom layer of color. And don't worry if you get a little bit on the green. You know, that's the nice thing about yellow and green. They really don't show up. Um, it, 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 the yellow almost, it looks translucent on top of the green. Yeah, there's a bit of white area, but I deliberately left that. Okay, now, I think what I did on the other one was I came in with a wash, there I go again there, okay, of the Sienna Gold. So I'm just going to dip my brush in that. Now, sometimes what I do when I want to wash, I also grab a bit of fabric medium and I really kind of make it, water it down so that it's not quite as intense as what's in here. So now what I'm gonna do is just, again, go over the same area. So see, it's a wash. You're not getting the super strong color, but it's definitely adding a bit of tint to that yellow that maybe I didn't want that stark of the yellow, um, that I just kind of wanted something I, I, I want to call it like a filtered color. Okay. And just keep going over it. And by leaving bits of that white, you know, the, the color goes on with this sienna gold maybe a little darker in some areas because it doesn't have the yellow on top, which is again, just gives you a good effect kind of, what do they call it, a painterly effect. Let me finish the other side. And this is very thinly colored. Um, and let me see if I can describe this. It's, it's more fabric medium than it is color. When you typically mix color, with fabric medium, 
it's usually two parts color, one part fabric medium. Um, I'll do a video later on on mixing Sukuniko inks with fabric medium because that's my preferred way to use them to prevent bleeding. And it's kind of the same way here. Now, if we took these ink tense pencils and we used water instead, first of all, there'd be a ton of bleeding. And um, maybe one of these days I'll, I'll put my money where my mouth is and show you how that, how that can occur. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the next color, by the way, which is this one right here. This darker version of the Sienna Gold, except this is called Burnt Orange. So now what I wanna do with this one, let me make sure this is all, I don't wanna get any crumbs in there. Everything sat for about 10 minutes, so I don't think it should. So just again, just like we did up here, but it's more of a wash. So I don't necessarily want strong color like I have up here, and I don't think I need it everywhere, but just kind of along the edges. And I'm just very lightly touching the edge with my brush. I'm not got, I don't have a whole lot of paint on there, and I'm just coming along and lightly laying down the paint over that area. By the way, the paint will have a tendency to pull pool. Let me pronounce that correctly so that my Texas accent doesn't get in the way. It can pull. Pool. P-O-O-L. Pool. And if that happens, you need to, to, to correct it with your brush or lift it with a paper towel because it, it doesn't look very good when it pools. Um, it, it gives it kind of a mottled look and and you're not going to like that um, so try to get up the excess in fact let me just pretend that i put a bunch down there um, i'm going to come along with a piece of paper towel not even a big piece just a a, a piece and um, right here i kind of have some streaks in there so i'll just come along and dab it very lightly and you see it takes away some of the color um, not much right it's got a little bit but just enough to kind of lighten it up so look at those leaves you've got the yellow kind of highlighting the leaves and then everything gets darker but it's 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 much more diffused than than what this is up here 